known as an expert in various aspects of this problem for many years. Published a famous book, Combating Mind Control, called Mind Control. Has just come out with another one, Freedom of Mind, which is no doubt you'll be willing to attract new readers. Charles? Yeah? The microphone is good. Really? Yeah. I can hear myself. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> and I always can. That's what my wife says. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, without more ado, Steve, you have 20 minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for inviting me to speak. And um, I'll do my best to keep you awake after lunch. Um, thanks to Tom Gando for talking about the Moonies as an apocalyptic cult. Uh, I was a member of the Moonies in the mid-70s. Many of you know my story, uh, but I was recruited in college and by attractive women after my girlfriend dumped me. And like many other victims of mind control cults, I didn't know what was happening to me. It was an incremental uh, manipulation and indoctrination. And I guess I want my my uh, talk is about how to help people involved with. Uh, apocalyptic cults or how to communicate with people in, in apocalyptic cults but like several of our speakers I really want to underscore the point that many people are getting into destructive cults uh, and the leader is just using the end of the world and the apocalypse as a technique of fear indoctrination what I call phobia indoctrination uh, it's not that people are worried about the end of the world and then they get into a, a, a destructive uh, cult. Um, so a few key points that I want to say. Uh, I, I am not a deprogrammer. I do not kidnap people and beat and torture them. And even though my first book, Combating Cult Mind Control, which I know is in French and Italian and German and several other languages, and I called myself an exit counselor. I don't even like to use that term anymore because so many of my clients don't want to leave. And if I represent myself as an exit counselor, they're like, I don't want to leave. Why are you trying to exit me? And basically over 36 years, I've had to evolve my approach to helping victims of totalistic groups. And so if I was going to make a generalization, I would say that the shift is away from uh, an intervention, a formal three-day or five-day sit the person down and try to uh, uh, teach them about mind control and expose them to critical literature about the group. The model has shifted to what I now refer to as the strategic interactive approach, and which is essentially a family-based uh, network team approach utilizing ex-members, maybe ministers, uh, maybe local uh, people who are nearby the person who's in the destructive cult. And we try to do a very customized strategy uh, uh, to help the person think for themselves. And that's what I say the whole point of the work is to empower the person to be themselves again, to have their own feelings, to think for themselves, to be able to make their own independent decisions. So even the, the frame of getting the person out of the cult is, for me, not a useful way of thinking about it. It's more useful to take a very loving, respectful approach to the person uh, I try to gather as much information as I can about who they were before they were recruited into the cult. I try to engage as many family members and friends, and I do a psychoeducational approach, uh, teaching them models of, such as Robert J. Lifton and Margaret Singer and my bite model. I might add that there's way more that I could speak about than I can do in 20 minutes. So I would invite you to please go to my website, freedomofmind.com. Uh, I have
have other longer talks that I've recorded that are up there. There's a lot of material. I've started doing interviews with former long-term members of different cults like Scientology, uh, NEK, Legionaries of Christ. Um, so it's an evolving process us using the internet and essentially uh, the idea is to understand what was done to the person by the destructive cult, uh, to understand that the person was not weak and frail and just uh, needing someone to control their life for the most part. In my experience, people who are recruited into cults are very bright, talented, creative, educated people from good families. Uh, and so what I want to say is that what we want to do is ethically influence the person to be themselves again, to counter the undue influence of what the destructive cult did to them. And critical to that idea is understanding that you, we have to do everything in our power to have access to the person. So if the person is very isolated, we want to try to find bridges to connect with the person. And often families in the beginning when they discover the radical personality change, they overreact or they react normally and they say, what's wrong with you? Are you in a cult? You're brainwashed. You know, get out of there, he's a cult leader. Which just reinforces the indoctrination of the cult, that you're being persecuted, that the group is bad, I mean that your family is bad, your parents are trying to control you. And so I try to get to the family as quickly as possible to say, you know what, uh, I may have overreacted at first to say it's a cult, you're, you're an intelligent adult, we've known each other our whole lives, I need to step back, I need to learn more about it, and engage in more of a healthy interaction uh, where part of me is concerned, uh, but part of me trusts you and knows that you're smart and that you wouldn't just do whatever someone tells you to do. And so much of my work is teaching effective communication strategies. Um, and so it's, it's an effort. Uh, it's not the old model of Steve, go get my daughter, sit her down, and, and fix her. It doesn't work that way. In fact, I'm a stranger, and in this day of internet, if the cult member finds out that the family's even talking with me, then they have a lot of disinformation about how bad a person I am, etc. So it's even better that the people who are influencing are family and friends and loved ones and concerned individuals. Um, so some key points that I want to say is that um, a, a shift has to happen in the way people talk to their loved one. Uh, you can't just say whatever's on your mind like you used to when someone's involved with an apocalyptic cult or something. You need to think strategic, goal-oriented. Uh, uh, and, and in order to do that, you, you need to step inside their mind to the best of your ability to imagine where they're coming from. And you can often learn by talking to ex-members of the group who can tell you what the belief system is and such. And basically translate your message into a way that's going to bring the person to feel closer to you and offer information about what they're thinking, what they're feeling, what they're experiencing, what, what was the thing that made them decide to get involved with the group, for example. Uh, and the person will basically tell you how to help them to leave if you have a good relationship with them. And I should add, it's not imperative that everyone have a good relationship, but we need at least one person to have a really good relationship with the person. And in those cases where there's no access, then we need to have somebody go in and make access, uh, sometimes as an agent of the family who is pretending to join the group or something like that. Um, 
And I should also add that uh, Monsieur Picotin, where are you? Are you in the audience? There you are. It has uh, read my book and is implementing many of my ideas. And we're talking about having a, another program together and to to convey the point to the public that destructive undue influence exists. Mind control exists. There are ways to discriminate healthy, uh, healthier, unorthodox groups versus destructive totalist mind control groups. Um, and that other than saying, well, the person's an adult, we can't do anything, or oh, the person says they're happy, so we should leave them alone, that in fact, responsible, loving families need to consider doing something to rescue their loved ones. And in fact, there are uh, this ethical, strategic interaction approach. So a couple of other key points I'd like to make, and that is uh, in the BITE model, which is my model of, of mind control. It's on my Freedom of Mind website in, in chapter two of the book. Actually, it's in the first book too, but I didn't call it the BITE model. Um, one key concept is thought stopping. Thought stopping is a behavior modification technique that members of mind control cults are taught to do on themselves. So, for example, when I was in the Moonies, my father read in the newspaper that Moon had an M16 gun factory. And he thought, oh, now I have the proof that's going to wake my son up. So he called me up and he said, Steve, Moon's got an M16 gun factory. And I said, glory to heaven, peace on earth, glory to heaven, peace on earth, crush Satan, crush Satan, true parents, true parents, true parents, true parents. I was chanting, doing thought stopping as a good Moony, because I had been trained that evil spirits and Satan were going to invade my mind. And it was coming through my father. So I. So my father's effort to try to wake me up actually made me deeper into the group, made me distrust my father more. So why do I share this story with you? It's because the Achilles heel to mind control cult uh, victims is that when you're in one of these groups, you don't think you're in one of these groups. You think other groups are, but not yours. And so the Achilles heel is talking about the other groups the person would agree are mind control group and are bad. And in that conversation, you can get into the specific criteria. Like, see this other group tells you you can't talk to X members and you can't read negative literature. Or uh, this other group uh, will excommunicate you or shun you or something. So you can go through the behaviors about the other groups and then you can gently say, so tell me, how is your group different than that? And again, the idea is to get the person to question, right? Not to win the argument. I'm right, you're wrong, you're in a cult, you should listen to me. No, 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 no. It's I respect you and I'm, I'm curious, tell me, what do you make of Scientology and the fact that they make uh, parents disconnect from their children, or children disconnect from their parents. What do you think of L. Ron Hubbard? Or what do you think of the Jehovah's Witnesses? Or what do you think of any number of these organizations? So it takes time to learn about the other groups to be able to develop a, a conversation that's possible, but it works. Uh, another technique that I wanted to share, how am I doing on time, Tom? Six and a half minutes. Is anyone asleep yet? No, good. Stay awake. Um, so chapter 10 of the new book, I have um, a whole chapter on phobias, which I think is the universal technique of manipulation and control. And it's very much in line with the theme of this conference, apocalyptic cults, because what are apocalyptic cults all about is doom and gloom and fear and stimulation of the amygdala, the part of the brain that is about survival. And essentially, the difference between a legitimate fear and a phobia is that a legitimate fear is of something that actually can hurt you, like stepping on a high voltage uh, railway line. 
you can die, you should be afraid of it. But if some guru draws a, a, a chalk line and says if you touch that you will die, spiritually, you need to be able to use your critical thinking to say that's, that's a, an irrational fear and there's no danger and you can step on it. Um, when I was in the cult, and I want to just touch on this, uh, some of the other speakers were showing, to mentioning movies. Mo modern day movies are used by destructive cults to program their members. Uh, 2012 was shown before, there's a movie Armageddon, uh, the World Mission Society Church of God that uh, Thomas Gandow was talking about actually has a YouTube with stolen images from the movie Armageddon in order to recruit and indoctrinate people in it. Well, I'm mentioning this because in 1974, Sun Myung Moon hired a theater uh, and bust 300 Moonies to see the Exorcist movie. I don't know if you remember the 1974 movie about a little girl possessed by the devil. Well, not only did we see the movie, then we were bussed back up to Barry, uh, Tarrytown, New York, and Moon said, God made the exorcist. This is a prophecy of what would happen to people who leave the Unification Church. And I didn't understand phobias. I was just listening to who I thought was the Messiah, telling me that God had made a Hollywood movie called The Exorcist, and that in fact, uh, if I ever questioned Moon or ever thought about leaving, I would be demon-possessed. Possessed. And coming from a Jewish family where I didn't believe in Satan and I didn't believe uh, in, in evil spirits, uh, I believed it 100% and it controlled my life to the point that I almost died in the group, uh, and which led to my parents rescuing me. So key points that I want to make is uh, understanding that social psychology exists, that we know a lot about the human mind, we know a lot about influence, we know that it's normal for human beings to adapt to their environment and to people in their environment. It's that we're hardwired to obey authority figures, particularly if we think they're legitimate authority figures and that in fact we can uh, come to accept a whole new definition of what is real relatively quickly and very impactfully. Um, I don't know how many of you have actually uh, exposure to the whole field of hypnosis, but uh, most people have exposure to stage hypnotists who are telling people that they can't remember their name or that their feet are glued to the stage and everybody laughs at them. But I'm here to tell you as a former leader of the Moonies that I was trained to do hypnosis when I was recru uh, recruiting and indoctrinating people without being told the word and by being basically in an altered state of consciousness or in a hypnotic trance as a good Moonie. Um, and so, again, understanding how the mind works, understanding how to communicate. How am I doing? Two minutes? One minute? It's a couple more minutes. By understanding that um, it's not the person's fault that they've been deceptively recruited into a destructive cult, but that in fact there was an influence process that got them involved in it and that love is stronger than mind control and that the person's real self still exists and that through love and through knowing how to communicate effectively you can reach that person and empower them to start thinking for themselves and in this day and age of the internet Things are dramatically different than they were in the 70s or 80s or even the early 90s because so much good information is on the internet that if we can just motivate people to go online and look at different stories or, or ask their opinions about certain video clips, it actually can plant seeds to get people to reality tests because indeed there is this Achilles heel 
in, in, in exclusive cults. Because when you're in one, you think you're following God or you are following the true leader. And I should also add, cults aren't just religious. They're political, therapy, business cults, cults of personality as well. But the, the point is, is that people, if they're given the opportunity to have information, have experiences, and then asked to reflect back um, what did they think when they first met the group or the guru? And would they have ever imagined that they'd be doing what they're doing today? If they're asked that kind of gentle but probing questions, it actually helps a lot to unlock the mind. So with that, I know that we've started late, so uh, I'm around later if people have questions. I know that we're talking about maybe bringing me back to France to do a program or something. Maybe my book will be done in French. I know there's a German copy happening, yes. Uh, Monsieur Piguetin is going to help publish it in French. He is a French publisher. And I thank you all for your attendance and um, your, your interest in helping the people involved with this, this important subject. Thank you.